Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. A multi-vehicle crash ending with one child in critical condition. One San Antonio police are now saying about the cause. A house explosion in Pennsylvania leaves several houses destroyed and damaged. The latest from first responders as some of those residents have still not been found. And taking a live look out of the Alamo City, already 80 degrees today. How hot did it get yesterday? Will that hot streak continue? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments for now. Good morning. It is Sunday. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. So Good morning. yesterday after work, did you make it out and about? Did you go outside? Did you have to? I well, I watered, which I always do. Nice. I went swimming inside. Smart. And then we went shopping, but not at a school supplies store. Okay, so you avoided the tax-free weekend crowd. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was, did you shop inside or outside? Inside. Okay. Because, but even just that brief like walk, and it's just in the parking lot on the asphalt yeah. by like five o'clock. Brutal, Sarah. Bad, bad in the afternoon, particularly between the hours of noon and 6 p.m. We got up to 105 yesterday, guys, which broke a record for the ninth day in a row in San mm. Antonio. Yeah, today we may be shy of a record by a whopping two degrees, but it's still going to be hot. Outside right now, you can see we've got some clouds early this morning. It's 81 degrees, not too bad. There's a breeze too. South winds at about 15 miles per hour. Uh, but yeah, get outside right now while well, you can because by 10 it's going to be 86 noon 94 104 for the high we're going to have south southeast winds at about 10 to 15 miles per hour during the afternoon when it's the hottest and the driest we will have high fire danger once again today so we're kind of on the copy and paste cycle of the forecast coming up though i'll have a look at how the texas power grid will potentially handle this week's heat there's going to be a day or two where it comes close supply and demand come close so I'll show you which day we really need to be on alert for, and we'll talk about a very slim chance for rain in the forecast in the week ahead. Max. Thank you, sir. San Antonio police now investigating a multi-vehicle crash that ended with a child critically injured. So take a look. This was the scene yesterday. This all unfolded near Bassey Road near Buckeye Avenue. Police on the scene telling us a truck ran a stop sign, hitting an SUV, causing it to spin out and then hit a third passing vehicle. A child had to be cut from the seatbelt. Serious condition, taken to the hospital. San Antonio police still investigating, trying to figure out who exactly is responsible. At last check, though, no charges have been filed. San Antonio police have arrested a man who they say set two homes on fire earlier this year. Police say 38 year old Alfred Malagon set his neighbor's house on fire on April 8th. The same night, another home was also burned and the investigation revealed that he intentionally set both those fires. His bond is set at $50,000. Well, a neighborhood in Pennsylvania, specifically a Pittsburgh suburb in ruins after a home explosion. An explosion ending with at least one person dead, several more in the neighborhood still unaccounted for. Take a look. This was the scene yesterday afternoon. This is a neighborhood in Pennsylvania and authorities say the explosion destroyed a home. Flames from that house blasted, destroying two neighboring homes, several people in the hospital. First responders still through the morning searching for victims buried under the debris. At least three people still unaccounted for. And another explosion in Missouri leaves 16 people injured after gas flames, gas fumes built up in the engine of a boat triggering an explosion. This happened Friday at Marina at Lake of the Ozarks. A spokesperson from Missouri Highway Patrol said someone was refueling the boat that led to gas fumes building up in the engine. 16 people are injured and police are still investigating. And a wild scene unfolding in Northern Virginia. Take a look at your screen. This was yesterday, a traffic crash led to a police chase involving a stolen ambulance. Police responding to a multi-vehicle crash when one of the drivers in the crash took off, then stole an ambulance. That driver crashed into nearly a dozen different vehicles before finally coming to a stop. Police took the driver into custody. Luckily, no injuries were reported. Well, messages sent to the sky yesterday as families and friends of Zachary Conley Moreno released balloons all in his honor. Zach was one of the two New Braunfels passengers who died in a plane crash in Wisconsin just a few weeks ago. His grieving family tells Avery Ever Everett this tragedy has brought dozens of people together. Sit together, they, they 
we want to send him a little message. There's no easy way to reach the sky. It's very hard. But family of Zachary Colley Moreno are hoping to send one final message. And we want to let him know that his legacy will go on and his passion will go on as much as we can possibly do that for him. A life lost doing something he loved. Zach was one of two people from New Braunfels that died in a Wisconsin plane crash just a few weeks ago. He was so young and uh, he had so much to give. A lover of history and traveling. Family and friends say Zach pursued everything he could with passion and they hope to do the same with one final send off. I wrote to him, fly with the angels, Zach. And why'd you write that? Because he loved to be on, on planes. But this takeoff came with tears. It feels really proud that he was able to do that and reach out to so many people. His grandmother says she still can't say goodbye. We love him. But she's holding on, knowing he's finally flying high. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. The Commemorative Air Force in San Marcos has set up a scholarship fund in Zach's memory. You can find those details on our website right now at KSAT.com. All right, the Alamo welcoming visitors from far and wide, celebrating a very special birthday. Davy Crockett, the king of the wild frontier, was born on August 17th, 237 years ago this year. The Alamo started celebrating a few days early. Crockett was a Tennessee congressman who played an important role in the Texas Revolution and died defending the Alamo. History lovers and families visiting the Alamo to learn more about the last stand through living history exhibits and other demonstrations. I got to do uh, um, some shooting because now I'm officially a, a Alamo defender. If you couldn't make it out there, don't worry. The Alamo will have free admission next Thursday, August 17th for Crockett's actual birthday anniversary. And I know growing up <laughs> in South Texas, those Davy Crockett hats, I think everyone had one at one point in their childhood. Did you ever come visit Texas as a, as a kid? As a kid, no. But when I did move here, one of my, I think I actually have pictures of me holding some of the old muskets and the old rifles mm -hmm. at, I think, exactly David Crockett's birthday celebration. And I was actually going to pull up the picture. It's pretty fantastic. Yeah. It's actually a really cool exhibit. So if you have time with you and the family, head out there. And if you take pictures out there with the family, send it to KSAC Connect. We'll show them. <laughs> Time now, 6.07, 80 degrees. After the break, blue sea creatures found on the South Texas seashore. They are not harmless. They might look. They're actually pretty beautiful. But we'll tell you about the Portuguese man of war and what to do if you get stung by one. Oh, no. It does not feel good. Let me tell you that. No, we know a lot of people through the summer, especially with the some of the last weekends until they head back to school, headed to the shore, headed to the local swimming pools, trying to do anything to beat the heat. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey. How hot it's going to get today. We'll be right back. Morning and welcome back. All right, looks can be deceiving, especially when it comes to these two blue sea creatures you're going to find at the South Texas seashore. And here's the scary part. One can give you a nasty sting. Ah, Padre Island National Seashore officials, they are telling people to avoid the per Portuguese man of war. They typically float on currents. They actually look really cool. They could float up to the shoreline during the spring through the late summer season. If you do get stung, you're urged to place the sting site under hot water, apply warm compresses. If you want to learn more about the sea creatures or just check them out, other things that you can find at the Texas Beach, head to ksat.com. I've never seen those before, but I've also really never been to uh, Texas I, Seashores. Well, I, I grew up mm -hmm. on the beach in Corpus Christi, and we would see these all the time. August, as you always see, jellyfish man of war. Um, my brother got stung by one, and he's yes. to this day says that it is the worst sting, worst pain he's ever oh. felt. But meat tenderizer. Oh. Yeah. Like, I don't know. If, I don't know if it worked, but Are you I. just beating him with the meat I don't, tenderizer? I don't know. No, the, the, like, salty the, solution. The, no, no, uh, no. Not, I was like, what are we doing here? No, no, not like uh, the, um, you know, the. The stuff that you put on meat. Yeah, like the salt. The salt. Yeah, okay. And apparently, I don't know if it Got was it. like my grandmother being like, put meat tenderizer on it. Yeah. No, that's the thing. But it, that it, worked. it okay. helped. It, it helped. Totally noted. Also, <laughs> another thing works, but 
probably shouldn't do it. I think that's what they're laughing at in the back. I, the, 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 from the Friends episode. The friends. If yeah. we know, you know. Joey you Chandler. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, we know about the heat. Yeah, we know about the heat. We were talking about Crockett Day, right? Mm -hmm. And I was able to get your picture on Now, look at that. Connect. Quick action. Take a look at this Max with a big gun I'm on Crockett Day. I'm telling you, we don't mess around out there. Abs apparently not. No. no. Wow. It was so much fun. Thank you to everyone who worked at the Alamo. It gave us the... Uh, the full visitor treatment. It was fantastic. That's awesome. This was early 2020, right? This was I March 2nd, 2020. So yeah. like two wow. weeks before the world shut oh down. Oh my goodness. Speaking of uh, the weather today, we are going to be hot all across the state of Texas. Uh, the white numbers you see here are the forecast highs. The yellow numbers are the records for the day. So today in San Antonio, it is going to be hard for us to get to the record of 106. We're forecasting 104, which is plenty hot. It just may not be record hot. As you can see, the entire state will be broiling. Let's take a look at ERCOT, uh, the power grid and the forecast supply and demand. The forecast supply here is in this blue line. The forecast demand is in this red bar and this is at 7 p.m. Why am I showing 7 p.m.? Well, because at 7 p.m. we start to see solar energy go down, but the demand is still very high for power because it's still hot at 7 p.m. You can see that there is one day in particular that we're really going to want to watch carefully and that's Tuesday. Tuesday that supply is going to be very close to the forecast demand. Now, uh, so far, the forecast supply is expected to meet the demand. It's just going to be close. So we're going to keep an eye on that. Tuesday is also a day where across Texas, the weather will be shifting a little bit. Here in San Antonio, it's still going to be hot, but there is going to be a bit of a different weather pattern on Tuesday for parts of Texas. Now that heat high is still going to maintain its strength on Monday. You can see that we'll be at 105 tomorrow on Monday, but notice that across North Texas, temperatures start to fall a little bit. Uh, below Low 100 degrees. That's because there's actually going to be a weak cool front moving through North Texas on Monday. That'll bring some rain to parts of Waco, Central Texas, maybe even Dallas as well. But it's still going to be hot here in San Antonio. It's still going to be 105 in San Antonio. That front, as it moves through the hill country and towards San Antonio, is going to fall apart. It's not going to be bringing us cooler weather. Instead, it'll bring us drier weather. Now, that'll actually elevate fire danger even more on Tuesday when that front moves through and falls apart on Tuesday morning. So again, it's still going to be hot behind that front 104 in San Antonio. However, there will be that boundary across South Central Texas, and so there is a small 10% chance for a stray shower or storm on Tuesday. Don't bank on the rain, bank on the heat but a little bit of a weather pattern change for parts of Texas. But then another heat high builds overhead and we're right back at it. Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, temperatures are going to be well above 100 for most of us across the state of Texas. So all of that to say there is a very small chance for an isolated shower on Tuesday, but the heat remains and the heat will persist. 81 degrees outside right now, south winds at about 15 miles per hour. It's in the upper 70s in the hill country and out west of San Antonio. Here's a look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast. Mostly cloudy right now. By 10, it's going to be 86. By noon, 94, mostly sunny. And in the afternoon, 104 for the high temperature right around 5 o'clock. Elsewhere across South Central Texas, we are going to be continuing to see high fire danger. So please remember to practice safety today, especially in the afternoon when fire danger will be the highest. Temperatures 106 in Del Rio, 105 in Pleasanton, 108 in Catula, 103 in Canyon Lake, 102 in Kerrville. And again, look at the forecast over the next several days. We are going to be over 100 every single day. Uh, bless you. Goodness, there is something in the air here. It's not molds. Molds are still low. And dust. it's the dust <laughs> in the studio probably. By Saturday, that'll be our 54th 100 degree day, guys. Jeez. Okay, like it's sad that I'm like, oh, but look, 103 by next Saturday. Yeah, that is sad. <laughs> that is what we have to look forward to. And I, a lot of people have been asking me, Sarah, when is this going to end? Tell us something we can hope for. Mm -hmm. There is honestly nothing in the weather pattern over the next several days that makes me think we're going to break it anytime soon, especially over the next seven days. It eventually will end. Absolutely. When I'm the hoping Earth's atmosphere tilts. tilts away, right where the Earth tilts away. If the atmosphere tilts away. Oh, not oh, yeah. Oh, no, uh, <laughs> but yeah, thank you guys for sticking with us during this hot weather pattern. We'll continue to keep you posted. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 617, already 80 degrees. We'll be right back.
Hollywood stars from a hit movie and television show like Stranger Things and Mandalorian and 90210 are coming to San Antonio this Let's fall go. for Big Texas Comic Con. The event is set for October 6th through the 8th at the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center. General admission starts at $26. You can read more about the prices and the event at KSAT.com. All right, so we got the guy from Stranger Things. Yeah, the sheriff. What's the his sheriff? Name? I don't remember. I don't know. But he was pretty fantastic. I thought he was funny. Yeah, it was good. Uh, didn't we have like um, Pedro no. Pascal will not be here. I got excited when they said Mandalorian. Mmm. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Our producer's like, stop talking about Comic Con. Trying to go. <laughs> Time Maybe. Now. 621, 80 degrees. Okay, this is such a cool story. We see mascots around school pep rallies, football games, and so much more. But what about who actually makes the mascot come to life? So coming up next, SA Live's Jen Tobias Strusky takes us behind the scenes of a San Antonian mascot maker. When I first started working here, it was like, yeah, this is a job to have. It's creative, I can work with my hands, yes. Becky Wilburn may have one of the coolest jobs in town. She's a mascot maker. Actually, I never saw a day in my life. Like I said, 24 years ago, I walked into the shop looking for a job, and my job was to wash clothes and set them upstairs and put them away, all the costumes. And I, one day I came down and, hey, I had nothing to do, and they go, well, I'm doing a church's chicken. Can you do the eyes? So I was showing, you know, Miss Moore was showing me how to do the eyes and everything. I was a, and I took off from there. This storage room is full of Becky's creations, each character made by hand. Much of her work includes local mascots that we've all become very familiar with. The most difficult mascot I have made was doing my first muscle suit. We did Robinson, um, I don't know if it's an elementary or middle school, but it was a rocket. That thing was... I never made a muscle suit before, but I did it. Guess what else she did? Becky helped make one of the most iconic mascots in the Alamo City, the Spurs Coyote. I've seen the coyote, and I've seen friends on Facebook with the coyote goes, I wonder if they know I made that thing, you know, but nobody knows who makes the coyote. Now they do. And while Becky has been here over 20 years, she now has a team of mascot makers. It was just me back then. I didn't have people that are as creative as Marshall and Chandler in the back. And with them, nothing's impossible with us. We are making stuff that I never made before. I love to build creatures, I love to build mascots, and I think that's why I'm still here. Does it feel like work? No. It's very clear Becky loves her job, but does she realize that her team is creating much more than just costumes? Mascots are mascots for me, and when they come in, and they scream because they've seen the, the mascot that they want. There it is right there. That's worth all the wages of raise or anything. So watching people come in and have that smile, say, that's what we need. So the next time you see a mascot at a school, college, or a Spurs game, remember Becky, Chandler, and Marshall here at Starline Costumes. You know how many times they ask me, what do you do? He goes, well, I make custom mascots for businesses and schools. A what? Yeah. A mascot. You know what a mascot is? They look at me with mm -hmm. Spurs Coyote. Oh, yeah, yeah, now we know what it's like. These are the best tools ever. And over the years, you can see behind me, I can prove it. For KSAT 12, we're shooting for the stars here. I'm Jen Tobias Dresky. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. It is 6.30 this morning. Thank you so much for starting your morning Good with morning. us. Good morning. And here's the breaking news. It is already hot outside. I know. <laughs> did you did you get outside at all yesterday? Uh, no, I walked to the car mm -hmm. and then met up with friends and then walked back to the car. But we stayed inside primarily. Big windows, so still got heat coming in. But that was pretty much the extent of my Max rarely. He's like an, yeah. you know, like an indoor cat. Like I yeah, indoor that, like, cat. They'll, they'll like go to the window, put a pot, and they're like, I'm good. I'm good. We don't yeah. need to go outside, especially when it's 105, Sarah. Oh my goodness, yes. And I have a method to save money and power, okay? Mm. So basically, I set my thermostat during the day to 78. I know. But I close all of the blinds and everything, mm -hmm. and it ends up not being too bad. But it is still going to be very hot today and fire danger will be high. We've got a red flag warning in effect once again throughout most of South Central Texas that includes San Antonio. 
Fire danger is high today, so let's do our part to help prevent creating and spreading grass fires. Outside right now, not too bad. It's 79 in Helotus, 79 in Bulverde. Good morning in Bandera, where it's 77 degrees, 77 in Hondo, 79 in Converse, 80 at Stinson, 81 in Gonzales. This is the forecast for the day, though. 86 at 10, 94 at noon, 100 already by 2 p.m., and 104 for the afternoon high temperature. We're going to have southeast winds today at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Now coming up in the forecast yesterday made our ninth day in a row of record heat in San Antonio. I'll have a look at which records are in jeopardy in the week ahead and we'll talk about a very slim chance for some rain for a few folks in the forecast coming up. Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, 22 year old Jose Luis Contreras arrested after trying to kidnap a woman at a Target store in East Texas. Officials tell us that the attempted kidnapping happened Wednesday at a Target store in Magnolia. The victim getting into her vehicle when Contreras allegedly grabbed her from behind tried to get her into his vehicle. Uh, the woman was able to escape. Contreras now facing charges of attempted kidnapping. It's a felony currently being held in the Montgomery County Jail. A woman is fighting for her life this morning after she was shot several times at a gas station in downtown San Antonio. So this happened at a Valero in the 900 block of West Hildebrand Avenue yesterday afternoon. Officers say they found the woman shot in the head and chest when they arrived. She was rushed to a nearby hospital and at last checked was in critical condition. We don't know much about the suspect. Police believe it was a man, but don't know what led up to the shooting or how he got away. And losing a loved one to fentanyl is what families here in Bear County have been sharing their stories over that will soon be seen around the world in a form of a documentary. KSAT's Camelia Juarez invited to watch one of those documentary interviews here in the Alamo City. One family telling her this documentary, it's helping their broken hearts start to heal. I need to tell people, how do I do this? The real life stories of real life people. Everyone needs to know. It, it needs to be told. A pill that was not what he thought it was. The one pill from a friend. These are all families who lost a loved one to fentanyl. They're called angel families. They're all sharing their stories for a new documentary, hoping it will save someone's life. Many are from our own South Texas community. Jake wanted to live. He, he had a future and that was stolen from him. Martha Johnson from Shirts lost her grandson Jake after he mistakenly took a fentanyl laced pill. She says it feels cathartic to talk about him. They're sharing our stories and we're, people are listening. And, and to us as the ones that are left behind that are hurting, it helps us and, and we, um, we heal. What are, what are those shining things that you remember about it? Glenn Muse is the director for Texas Pictures Documentaries and let us sit in on some of the interviews. We can make eye contact with the subject and the subject makes eye contact with us. Showing us how he makes the families more comfortable by using a device that blocks the camera. It's impactful. The documentary is connecting angel families together you know, the guy. through the interview process. I'm like, oh my goodness. That sounds like my story. Mm -hmm. I could relate to that and it helps me. But also online. Muse says the project started with a few dozen interviews on YouTube. Each video has nearly 50,000 views. And they're finding this series and finding some comfort in seeing that they're not alone. Camelia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. So last month we had a fighting fentanyl town hall discussion right here at KSAT 12. We spoke with several people who had personal battles with fentanyl and some who even lost loved ones. The entire goal of the special, start a conversation with kids and loved ones about the many dangers of the deadly drug. You can watch that special right now. Head to our website and you can do so. Pull out the phone, go to the camera app, scan the QR code on your screen. It'll take you right to the special. In your morning headlines, disbelief, sadness, now turning to anger and frustration for so many families in Hawaii. Much of the western part of the island of Maui charred by fast-moving wildfires. Five days ago, at least 80 people confirmed dead. Hundreds still have not been accounted for. Officials say more than 2,200 structures damaged, even destroyed. ABC's Melissa Don has the latest from Maui. 
Cadavers sniffing dogs searching the rubble in the historic town of Lahaina today as crews look for victims or any survivors of the fierce wildfires that struck on Tuesday. FEMA workers also on the ground with Hawaii Governor Josh Green on Saturday getting a close look at what is left. Not much. Patience, prayers, and perseverance. That's what we need. And we need that from everyone. That's not everyone in Maui County. That's from the whole world. The wildfires are now Hawaii's deadliest natural disaster in the state's history. Residents capturing this video as they evacuated, the flames glowing, wind blowing. Annalise Cochran ran to the ocean to survive, spending more than seven hours in the water. And while um, the fire was happening and the cars were exploding, uh, we would duck into the water and we would put our mouths as close to the surface as we could so that we could breathe. They will not let us get through. On Saturday, officials opened one route into West Maui for residents who must show proof of residence, but we saw many people turned away. We've been waiting here since 11 a.m. Uh, on uh, Wednesday morning. Yeah, I don't think they're handling this well at all. The state attorney general has announced a comprehensive review of Maui's evacuation policies, including systems for notifying residents to get out during emergencies. Notifications many here say they never received. There are multiple fires at the same time, and the circumstance was greatly complicated also by the heat and the speed with which the fire spread, destroying a great deal of infrastructure. Over time, we'll be able to figure out if we could have better protected people. Amid the grief, the community coming together to help one another. Families going through donations, sorting through supplies for those who lost everything. Melissa Don, ABC News, Maui. Well, back here at home, if you're headed out for a tax-free weekend, going to church, doing anything this weekend, this Sunday morning, the east side of I-10 and Loop 410 interchange shut down throughout at least today. TxDOT says the east and westbound lanes of I-10 and all northbound lanes of Loop 410 not going to be open. Road work lasting through at least tomorrow morning, Monday morning at 5 a.m. We have some alternative routes posted for you right now. Just head to KSAT.com. San Antonio Parks and Rec is extending their pool season for another month. That's some good news there. Nine pools will remain open on the weekends until September 24th. Two of those nine pools will also be open on weekdays as well. Parks and Rec says this will help families stay cool as this, oh my gosh, triple digit heat continues. For a list of the pools that will remain open, just head to ksat.com. All right, we have a double header today on Leading SA. Two leaders of our community joining us live this morning at 8 and 8.30 a.m. At 8 a.m., set to be joined by the city manager, Eric Walsh, discussing the processes and procedures of the city budget, how our tax dollars are going to work, and how you can have your voice heard. Then at 8.30 a.m., the superintendent of Southside ISD joining us live, talking about the start of the school year, academic progress, expansion of the Southside, and of course, teacher pay, recruitment, and retention. If you have any questions you'd like to ask either individuals, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading Essay section of KSAT.com, then join us in our next hour. Time now, just about 640, 80 degrees. Archaeologists have uncovered a 1,500-year-old village in Mexico City. What they found buried inside, that's still ahead of GMSA. And coming up, two restaurants with a troubled health inspection history. They're back in the spotlight, what they did wrong behind the kitchen door. Oh my gosh, another one. Another one. Another one. Well, we know this song and dance. It's hot out there. Please be safe, triple digits in our forecast this week. Sarah Spivey will let us know about that when we come back. Welcome back. Roaches in dirty conditions lead to reinspections for a local coffee shop and convenience store with a history of low health scores. And it's not the first time get Tim Gerber has reported on these problems behind their kitchen doors. Picnic Foods, located in the 1200 block of South General McMullen, had their June inspection score of 81 posted right on their front door. It was a two-point drop from the 83 they had when they were on BKD back in January. This time, there was a roach in a cooler on the service line, as well as many flies in the business. That roach came in contact with ready-to-eat lettuce and cut tomatoes. The pickle tongs were rusty. The ice scoop found on top of the dirty ice machine and the ice bucket was broken and cracked. The inside of the ice machine had a pink and black mold-like substance growing on the walls. 
They also needed to clean up grease that was caked on the floors, equipment, and walls. A reinspection was ordered. Lucy's Cafe in the 500 block of West Mitchell Street earned an 82. Some foods were found held at improper temperatures. A bag of chili powder had live weevils, while a bag of dried shrimp had ants. Small live roaches were also spotted near a sink. Metal racks in a refrigerator had peeling paint, and they needed to do a thorough cleaning. They were given 10 days to make corrections before reinspection. Jim's Restaurant, located at the corner of Culebra and Loop 1604, earned an 86 and a reinspection. This is the third time the business has been on BKD. Raw chicken in a cooler was too warm. It was moved to a working cooler. There were live roaches along the cooking line and in a non-working cooler. The business told to intensify cleaning efforts to remove food and grease buildup on the walls, floors, and ceilings. They were also told to stop storing employee hats on top of clean plates. From behind the kitchen door, Tim Gerber, KSET 12 News. So here's the thing. We run David Elder's Texas Eats uh -huh. on Saturdays and then BKD on Sundays. Sundays yeah. And I'm kind of like, Texas Eats makes me hungry. Yeah. Behind the kitchen door makes me never want to eat them. Not more. so much. You had a really good point, though. Hearing some of the you know disgusting, devastating details... How are they still getting an 82? I don't know. That's... I think maybe it's like if you have your first time mm. vendor, they give you so many days. Yeah. But then if you don't, then yeah, like you get shut down. 10 days. All right, speaking yeah. of disgusting and devastating, the weather. Yeah, the weather has been very hot. In fact, yesterday made our ninth day in a row where we have either tied or broken a record. Yesterday, our high was 104. That beat a record of what a... Uh, Pardon me, yesterday our high was 105. That beat a record of 104 set back in 1969. We have consistently tied or beaten records since August 4th. That's nine days in a row. Today, it's going to be hard for us to get to the record of 106, but we'll be close. 104 for the high temperature. We're probably not going to get to that record, but still just as hot outside. What's the difference between 104 and 106, really, when you get down to it? However, after t today, take a look at how forecast Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We'll be close to breaking or tying records every single day of this upcoming week, even on Tuesday when we have a small chance for those north of San Antonio to see an isolated shower or storm. We're starting off the day with clouds, though. That's what's going to allow for us to trim off a degree or two from the high, but it's still going to be hot because these clouds are quickly going to clear. It's 81 degrees. South winds at about 15 miles per hour. Humidity is at 85% right now, but the humidity will be coming down in the afternoon, and that means higher fire danger for us in the afternoon. 78 in Kerrville. Good morning in Comfort, where it's 77. In Bernie, 77 degrees, 79 in Holotus, 81 in Divine, 79 in Converse, 81 in New Braunfels, 80 in Gonzales, 79 in Hondo, and 77 in Yavaldi. In your KSAT 12 hour forecast, mostly cloudy right now, but by 10, skies will be clearing. It'll be mostly sunny and 94 at noon. South winds today, 10 to 15 miles per hour. So during the peak heat of the day, we're going to have breezy conditions, dry atmosphere. That means high fire danger. Nothing Nothing but sunshine this afternoon, 104 for the high temperature in San Antonio. Again, two degrees shy of a record. Hot just about everywhere, including out to the west, where it'll be 106 in Del Rio, 106 in Eagle Pass, 107 in Creaso Springs. Laredo, you're going to be at 109 today. 104 Gonzalez, 102 in Kerrville, 100 in Rock Springs. And a little bit closer to San Antonio, around the metro area, it'll be 105 in New Braunfels and Seguin. 105 in Divine, 101 in Bernie, and 105 in Bandera. Looking at the weather setup across the nation, a lot of the northern tier of the U.S. getting some good, decent summer rain today. We are not going to be seeing any rain. That heat high is still firmly in place, and it's going to be the dominant weather pattern over the coming days. Tomorrow, 105 in San Antonio, but notice that across North Texas, temperatures actually fall. That's because there's going to be a weak cool front moving through North Texas tomorrow. It, it'll bring rain as far south as Waco and maybe early Tuesday morning to parts of the hill country.
but that front is going to completely fall apart as it moves through San Antonio. We'll see drier air behind that front, perhaps an isolated shower, but the chance for rain is only 10% and it's still going to be hot. 104 in San Antonio on Tuesday, and then that heat high will continue to build in and continue to give us very hot temperatures in the week ahead. By Thursday, we'll be even hotter, 106 for the high temperature on Thursday. So highs will range anywhere from 103 to 106 in the coming days. High fire danger continues, and Saturday will be our 54th 100-degree day. I do not see over the next 7 to 10 days an end in sight for the 100-degree weather. I am hoping by this time next week we could see a change, but we really will not know until this time next week if we're going to see a change in that weather pattern. Okay. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. 650, 80 degrees. Researchers in Egypt have made a discovery that dates back to 41 million years ago. What was found and why it's so important to the whale species? All right, taking a live look out at the roadways, we have a few people out and about, maybe headed to church early, maybe headed out to do some tax-free weekend shopping, doing what they can early, trying to beat the heat. If you do have plans today, do it early. Try to avoid those triple-digit days. Oh, let's take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, zero, four, six, fireball four, daily four. Three, eight, five, six, fireball six. All right, so are you still playing uh, cash, five? cash five? Every now and then, yeah. Okay. Get like two bucks from it. Might as well. Good return on you your spend investment. Spend $1, get two bucks back. Look at that. I wish we could double every investment. Look at that. Okay, can look at these cash five numbers. 8, 12, 13, 14, 34. Your lotto, Texas. 15, 19, 31, 38, 43, 49. And here we go. Is this the first Powerball since like the big... Uh, Big 1.5 billion. Well, that was a mega ball. Right. But yeah, this one's climbing. It's getting there. Okay. Almost at your line of demarcation I think there. So. Okay. Here are your numbers 19, 21, 37, 50, 65, Powerball 26, Power Play 2. Good luck. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. So, researchers discovering the fossil that may be the smallest whale species known to science. So, it dates back, get this, about 41 million years ago. It's been named after Pharaoh. King Tut, also known to so many people, probably the most famous pharaoh. Yeah. I mean, from my perspective, the whale estimated to have weighed, get this, only as much as 400 pounds, only eight feet long. Only so 400. Only 400 pounds. That's like me after a buffet. <laughs> Paleontologists still working in the area where the fossil was discovered. They say it's a good, there's a good chance they could find even earlier fully aquatic whales. Well, archaeologists have uncovered the lost remains of Teotihuacan village in Mexico City. Based on the ceramics found around the site, experts date the village to be around 1,500 years old. They found three bodies, one child and two adults, were also discovered. Archaeologists believe the village may have housed a community of fishermen, gatherers, and artisans as well. All right, look at that. Time now, 655, 80 degrees. Here's a look at what's coming up on Good Morning America. Or not. Okay. Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. This morning, remembering Zachary Colley Moreno. He was one of the two New Braunfels passengers who died in a Wisconsin plane crash a few weeks ago. We'll hear from his grandmother on how his legacy will live on. And we have a leading essay double feature today at 8 a.m. Speaking with city manager Eric Walsh, talking about how you can have your voice heard when it comes to making our city's budget. Then at 8.30 a.m., Southside Superintendent Rolando Ramirez joining us live just the day before students head back to school tomorrow morning. 81 degrees, it's going to be another triple digit day. Is there any hope in sight? Sarah Spivey will let us know in her forecast in just a bit. All right, good morning. Happy Sunday, 8 a.m. this Sunday. It is August 13th. Thank good you so morning. much for starting the morning with us. So we kind of just talked about it. It is back to school for so many students tomorrow morning. Right. For so many families, this is the last 
Sunday, and I, I gotta it's like say, the last hurrah. it's the last hurrah. If you do want to go out and about, run the errands, have some family time, do maybe that tax free shopping, tax free shopping, do it early. Because, Sarah, what were you saying? Afternoon, like noon to six, is just miserable. Yeah, a great, great forecast there, Max. It is miserable afternoon. We'll be up to 104 this afternoon. We do have some clouds out there right now. Take a look outside as we look off. You can see off in the distance there. We've got uh, the downtown San Antonio skyline and it is cloudy to start the day. It's 82 degrees, mostly cloudy south winds at about 10 miles per hour already feels like it's near 90 because humidity is at 82%. But later on today, that humidity will be coming down in the afternoon and skies will be clearing. We'll already see clearing here in the next couple of hours. 94 at noon, mostly sunny 104 for the high temperature today. High fire danger southeast winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Now in the week ahead, we're going to be watching the ERCOT grid very carefully. There's a couple of days there where uh, the supply and the demand are going to come close to each other. I'll have a look at the state of the grid coming up in just a bit, and we'll talk about a scorcher of a week with only a very small rain chance. Max. Thank you, Sarah. A woman waking up in the hospital this morning after being shot at a gas station in downtown San Antonio. So take a look. This was the scene under Valero in the 900 block of West Hildebrand Avenue. Now, officers there are telling us they found the woman shot in the head and in the chest. She was rushed to a nearby hospital. At last check, still in critical condition. Police say the suspect is a man, but they don't have much more information. If you have any info that can help in the investigation, you're asked to call police immediately. Dozens of people released balloons with messages inside in honor of Zachary Cali Moreno yesterday. We first told you about Zach's story a few weeks ago. He was one of the two New Braunfels passengers who died following a plane crash that happened in Wisconsin. His family says they hope they sent one final message to Zach with the balloon release yesterday. Want to let him know that his legacy will go on and his passion will go on as much as we can possibly do that for him. Right now on KSAT.com, we have details of a scholarship fund the commemorative Air Force in San, San Marcos has set up in Zach's name. All right, you have one last chance today to save a little extra cash before heading back to school. Sending your kids back to class. For every $100 you spend this weekend, you can save about $8 on qualified items like clothes, shoes, backpacks, school supplies. There's a full list of items that are not under tax-free weekend exemptions. We have that list. Everything you can and cannot save money on, just head to KSAT.com. And if you're heading out to get some of these deals, the east side of I-10 and Loop 410 interchange will be shut down today. The east and westbound lanes of I-10 and all northbound lanes of Loop 410 will not be open. It's because road work will last there through tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. We have some alternate routes posted for you over on KZAT.com. Just sign up for push alerts on our KSAP app so you never miss a traffic update. All right, the city of San Antonio expected to grow our budget to $3.7 billion this year. It seems like a lot because it is. It is a 9% increase from last year's budget. So joining us in today's leading essay segment to explain how the budget gets formed is city manager Eric Walsh. Good morning, sir. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right, so, so much of this time we focus in on key issues, which we will get to, but let's start big picture. What are the, the first steps in forming our city's budget? What do those steps look like? So the, the, the first step, there's a couple of them. Uh, you know, the, the council generally in the springtime comes together and, and develops kind of from their perspective as a group what our major priorities are that need to be addressed. Um, and, and so we go through that. And then uh, this year we did something a little bit different. We hired a, an independent company to come in and do a statistically valid survey of residents uh, to give us an additional layer of, of input. And, and, and Max, I'll tell you that it was very consistent with what the council said. It, that gives me a great framework to, to work over the summer to put together that, that proposed uh, document. So there is a proposed budget out there, 9% larger than last year. So where does that extra money come from? So a, a lot of it, most of that is coming from our construction side. Um, a lot of capital investment. Um, those are all included with our voter approved bond program. Um, and, and those are projects and funding that we already had in place um, based on debt issuances. So 
Um, that's the majority of it. There's a, uh, we're seeing a 6% increase in our general revenue and about a 5% increase in our general expenses for next year. So now we can dive into the nitty gritty. The proposed San Antonio mm -hmm. Police Department budget comes in at $570.6 million. That's a 7.8% increase. You know, why the, the big jump in budget and what hopes to be done? So we, uh, we're, we're proposing that 105 police officer positions, uh, the, the most we've ever had in any one year. Um, the, 100 of those will go into patrol uh, to um, improve staffing, uh, primarily to increase our visibility and give officers a little bit of breathing room uh, so that they're not running from call to call on some shifts. Our, our uh, long-term three-year plan is to add 360. And so um, uh, this is the first year of that, of that effort. Um, those five, the, the other five that we're adding, we're, we're looking to expand um, capacity and throughput uh, out at the police academy. Right now, over the last five years, um, on a normal basis, we're graduating about 105, 159, 160 cadets, and, and we're hoping to push that up to 235 uh, beginning next year. So, you know, huge investment. It's one of the primary uh, responsibilities of any municipality is uh, public safety and and we want to make sure that we've got the the resources out there to continue to grow or continue to address a growing community i mean we're we're continuing to grow and and um uh, we get two million nine one one calls a year and eric over the last year it seems like animal care services have had to respond to a number growing of calls as well so that's addressed in the budget with a 26 percent increase in funds but do you think that's enough well, it's not, um, and and part of what I laid out to the council last week is that we're going to have to incrementally increase funding in, in in those areas over the next three years. Um, the three the three big areas of ACS that are in the proposed budget is uh, increased enforcement, uh, increased uh, uh, funding set aside to work with our rescue partners to to uh, keep our live release rate out of our facility high. Um, and then third is uh, beefing up our funding for spay neuter. In, in, uh, you've got to be able to do all three at once to really make an impact. And uh, I think I think fiscal year 24 is a good starting point. 26% it, it, is a large increase, um, but there are, um, you know, I shared with the council last week. We we get 50,000 311 calls for uh, aggressive dogs. Uh, neglect or cruelty, and uh, we don't have the resources currently to respond to all those. We, we respond to 44% of those calls. And so having the resources and planning for them um, and uh, uh, is, is critical. It, it, it is the only city service where you may call 301 and, and six times out of 10, uh, right now you're not going to get a response. And and from my perspective, it's unacceptable. So, the, so what we laid out to council last week was a plan to to get there uh, over three years, and and uh, you know we're we're launching off into the the council process part of this uh, process where we'll have detailed work sessions and a lot of community input. All right, we're running out of time, but I want you to answer these last two questions. So I'm going to bring them into one big question. You mentioned it a, a couple questions ago. Our city is growing. We're seeing it growing upward and outward. How does the city address that growing infrastructure? You talked about the additional public safety requirements, but what about our roads? You know, what about CPS, sewer lines? We are growing. And then, last question for you, I know we're throwing it into one. How can people have their voices heard in finalizing this budget? All right, let me hit the last question first. So beginning next week, over the next two weeks, we've got budget town halls uh, in every city district. And uh, the available, the dates and times and locations are available there online. Uh, please participate. It's key. And, and, uh, and, and, uh, and let us know what you think. Uh, we'll take all that feedback back to council. Um, how we plan for that, Max, you have to plan for it, right? Uh, both from a, uh, a financial standpoint, but also from an execution standpoint. The, the work we're doing uh, out at the airport and the new expansion, uh, the implementation of the 2022 bond, um, making sure that we are laying 
the work out um, over the next three to five years that needs to be done because we can't do it all in one year. Uh, but more importantly, making sure we have the resources and we're making the smart financial decisions as a city to be able to, to uh, continue to afford and be thoughtful about how we spend that money. Uh, but it, it is, it is uh, the balancing act is doing that from a growing community, but then also maintaining what we have. Um, and um, we're, uh, uh, we just got the, the city just got uh, uh, reaffirmed as a, a AAA bond rating um, uh, city, uh, one of the largest cities in the in the country with the best bond rating, and um, you know we'll continue to do that. Um, it's but you've got a plan just like you would your household budget. So. Okay, well, San Antonio City Manager Eric Walsh, thank you so much for taking your time to join us this morning and break down the budget. For our viewers, you can catch this interview in full later on KSAT.com. All right, time now, 812, 81 degrees. School is back in session for some, but that doesn't mean the hot weather is packing up the pools. We'll tell you some exciting news from San Antonio's Park and Recreation. And a quick live look out of the Alamo City, 81 degrees now. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey for your full forecast in just a few moments. Morning and welcome back. So it's no secret, it's hot. Yeah. Here's another thing that's not a secret. Heat's not going away right now. <laughs> so San Antonio Parks and Rec extending their pool season for at least another month. Nine pools remaining open on weekends until September 24th. Two of those will be open for those needing to cool off during the week for fullest locations. Just head to ksat.com. The article should be on the homepage. So Sarah Spivey, I gotta say, is September 24th even long enough? <laughs> yeah, you know, I think I think it will be because okay. it's eventually gonna be fall. And but we're stuck in this weather pattern for at least the next seven days, guys. Mm. It's hard for me to see an end definitively of the triple digit weather. And you can see that today it's gonna be hot. The white numbers here are the forecast highs. The yellow numbers are the records. I think we'll be shy of a record here in San Antonio by two degrees. We're still gonna be hot though, 104. And as you can see, most of the state of Texas going to be above 100 degrees. We're going to be watching the ERCOT grid very carefully. Today and tomorrow, supply should meet demand no problem. But at 7 p.m. on Tuesday, the supply is going to come close to the demand. The supply being the blue line here and the demand being the red bar. You can see at 7 p.m., once we start to lose the solar uh, energy for the day, uh, there's still a high demand at 7 p.m. because it's so hot. So we'll watch very carefully Tuesday uh, for that. For now, though, ERCOT does not expect any disruption in service or anything like that. Now on Tuesday, there is going to be a weather pattern change for parts of Texas. Notice that the future cast shows that heat high still maintaining strength around San Antonio. It's going to be 105 tomorrow, but tomorrow in North Texas, temperatures are going to fall below 100 degrees. Even in the panhandle, it's only going to be in the 80s. That's because a weak cool front will be moving through North Texas tomorrow. It'll bring an opportunity for rain in Waco and parts of Central Texas, maybe even an ice isolated shower as far as northern Kerr County tomorrow in the evening hours, but it's still going to be hot here in San Antonio and the catches. This front is going to fall apart as it moves through San Antonio. It's not going to have any cooler weather with it. It will, however, bring in some drier air from the north. All that's going to do is increase our fire danger on Tuesday, so it's still going to be hot 104 degrees on Tuesday behind that weakening front, and there could be one or two isolated showers. We're only talking about a 10% chance on Tuesday. That chance is there and it's a little bit different of a weather pattern, but the big story is the heat is still going to continue as that heat high builds back in from the west. Most of next week is going to be anywhere from 103 to 106, including Thursday when we'll be at 106 here in San Antonio, 110 in Del Rio. Bottom line, very small chance for shower on Tuesday. Otherwise, the big time heat continues for the next seven days. I am hopeful that this time next weekend we will have a weather pattern change for you in the week ahead. But for this upcoming week, it is more of the same, my friends. High fire danger and high heat. 82 degrees outside right now. Some clouds this morning. We got up to 105 yesterday. With clouds sticking around for another couple of hours, we'll be at 104 today. So still hot. 82 in Del Rio. 79 increases springs. Good morning in Kerrville. We're at 78. 81 
81 in New Braunfels. It's uh, 81 in Gonzales, 83 in Castroville, 80 in Rio Medina, and 78 in Bandera. Look at this KSAT 12-hour forecast for you. Clearing skies by 11. We're already going to be at 90 degrees, 94 at noon. Sunny in the afternoon, 100 by 2. And then in the later afternoon hours, 104 for the high temperature. Still 99 degrees by 8 p.m. Reminder that fire danger is high today. High fire danger, no campfires or burn piles, please. Avoid using tools that create sparks. It's the weekend. Some folks like to do yard work, but try to avoid using chainsaws. Dispose of cigarettes properly. Don't drag trailer chains and do not park your car on grass. Otherwise, again, this is the, the forecast high for the day today. 102 Kerrville, 106 Del Rio, 108 Catula, 105 Pleasanton, 103 Canyon Lake, 104 in Gonzales. And look at the forecast over the next several days. Again, a bit of a depressing forecast for us. There is that sliv a sliver of a chance of rain on Tuesday. By Saturday, we'll have our 54th 100 degree day. Oh, yeah, with that news, we'll send you to break and we'll be right back with more news. <laughs> The Spurs Holy Trinity are all finally in the Hall of Fame together after Tony Parker was inducted this weekend. Other Spurs members added to the Hall of Fame this year. Oh, we also saw Pau Gasol, Becky Hammond, Shouts, and of course, head coach Craig Popovich. Marking the first time a coach and player inducted together. So Tony Parker, presented by his Hall of Fame teammates, Monty Ginobili and Tim Duncan, puts a smile on my face just thinking about them all. So Pop presented the big three and... Of course, David Robinson. Becky Hammond there to be inducted as a WNBA legend. But when you're also the assistant head coach for the Spurs for eight years, you still are a Spur to San Antonio. Okay, so from the Spurs to the Cowboys. Cowboys young studs put on a show in Dallas preseason debut, taking on Jacksonville. Rookie running back Deuce Vaughn standing a solid 5'5", five five, making plays, racking up 56 yards along with touchdown. Uh, but at the end of the day, the Cowboys did not win. Mm. It's preseason, so it really doesn't matter. We got to see some of the, the cool highlights. We got to, you know, see some of the depth. Uh, Cooper Rush looked great. But Cowboys lost to the Jaguars 28-23. Next up, Cowboys in Seattle this Saturday at 9 p.m. In some better preseason opener news, Buffalo Bills' DeMar Hamlin played in his first preseason game yesterday. So we reported back in January about when he went into cardiac arrest that month. Uh, Hamlin made three tackles during the home game, taking on the Indianapolis Colts. Doctors cleared Hamlin to resume football activities back in April. He's made steady progress, rejoining his teammates during the preseason. And I want to go back to the Spurs for a second because it was cool. Uh, obviously, Tony did a bunch of interviews. Yeah. And they asked him, you know, which was your favorite finals that you won? And you'd think it would be the finals that he won finals MVP. But he actually said 2014 was his favorite okay. finals because they came off the 2013 devastating Ray Allen shot. Mm. So 2014, he was like, we needed to remind the world that we are back. And he's like, if you look at the passing and the team camaraderie from that year, it was unmatched across the league. Well, hopefully it can be matched this season. Look at you. Wemby's back. All right, time now, 826, 82 degrees. Okay, don't go anywhere. That's right. Southside Superintendent Rolando Ramirez joining us live in the next half hour. We're going to be talking about what students and families should expect first day of school tomorrow, plus the end. District on the rise. We're going to explain in just a few moments. Good morning and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Costa. It's Sunday, August 13th. Thank you so much for waking up with us on this Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Sunday mornings and actually, you know, Saturday mornings, I like to like have a slow start and mm. stuff, but because of the heat, I just always feel rushed to get out the door okay. to get like the day started and get everything I have to do outside done early. So I feel like there's no lazy summer morning, Sarah, because these triple digits, they're dangerous. Yeah, they are, especially in the afternoon when it is the hottest. And today we're going to be up to 104. In addition to the heat safety, I'd like to remind you of fire safety too. Red flag warning in effect today for all the counties you see here in pink, although all of us around South Central Texas should be careful as uh, there's a lot of dry vegetation out there. We just haven't seen any rain over the last several days. It's 82 degrees as we start our day here in San Antonio. There are some clouds out there right now. 78 in Bandera. Good morning in Kerrville. 
Seattle, where it's 78 degrees, 80 in Bulverde, 81 in Hondo, 80 at Stinson, 79 in Yavaldi, and 82 in Gonzales. We're going to quickly warm with clearing skies. Some clouds out there right now, but by noon it's going to be mostly sunny in 94, 104 for the high temperature today. Southeast winds at 10 to 15. Again, a breeze uh, contributing to the high fire danger this afternoon. Now, coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk about a very slim chance for rain. And yesterday, we had our ninth record setting day in a row. Impressive to see this kind of heat. Will we hit the record today? I'll have the details on what the record is for this Sunday coming up in just a bit. Sarah. Sarah, thank you. ABC is reporting that as of now, 93 people have died from the wildfires in Maui, making it the deadliest wildfire in the United States in the last 100 years. More than 2,200 structures are destroyed, with 85% of those being residential, and more than 2,100 acres are burned. FEMA says the cost to rebuild is estimating at $5.5 billion dollars. The cause of the fire is still not known at this time, but residents are puzzled and angered over the lack of warnings. And those residents, those families, giving ABC an inside look of what it feels like in those harrowing moments when the fires were just starting. ABC's Gio Benita shows us how volunteers now stepping out and trying to help. This morning, communities trying to recover in the wake of the deadliest U.S. wildfire in a century. Overnight, that grim reality from officials. At least 93 lives lost since the devastating inferno broke out on Tuesday. Now, we were here just two days ago, and the number was smaller, and it's going to continue to rise. We want to. FEMA saying the fire damaged more than 2,200 structures and burned through more than 2,100 acres. The devastation is so complete that you see metals twisted in ways that you can't imagine, and you see nothing. Uh, from organic structures left whatsoever. The agency deploying more than 150 workers to the island to assist in recovery efforts. Across Maui, people sharing harrowing tales of survival. Annalise Cochran was able to escape the fire by jumping into the ocean, telling me she was clinging to a wall for more than seven hours. So how did you survive? I climbed over the seawall into the ocean, and while um, the fire was happening and the cars were exploding, uh, we would duck into the water and we would put our mouths as close to the surface as we could so that we could breathe. And now, anger is directed at the local government. Residents saying they were not given enough warning. Our Melissa Don catching up with people outside Lahaina who were having trouble returning to their homes. I saw no management of the situation whatsoever. There was one police car with like the little blue lights flashing. Nothing about there's a fire, evacuate, get out. No fire trucks. I never saw a drop of water going through. There was no alert that went off, no alarm, uh, no text that was telling us that we needed to evacuate. I was with my neighbors outside watching smoke billowing at 80 miles an hour over my apartment. And that's when we saw flames about one block away, kind of catty corner across. A you got no wall. warning at all. Absolutely no warning. Authorities responding overnight, saying that the speed and intensity of the flames complicated efforts to warn citizens. There are multiple fires at the same time, and the circumstance was greatly complicated also by the heat and the speed with which the fire spread, destroying a great deal of infrastructure. Over time, we'll be able to figure out if we could have better protected people. That was ABC's Gio Benitez reporting and Maui Maui Kids over on Stone Oak Parkway is offering to help the San Antonio community with donations towards the American Red Cross of Hawaii. So if you'd like to make a donation, you can take it by their location. They are on the intersection of Stone Oak Parkway and Hebner Road. We're back here at home, students all across San Antonio, some back in the classroom, some headed back to the class tomorrow, Alma Heights, East Central, Harlandale, Lackland, Northeast. Southside ISD, Uvalde CISD, all starting tomorrow morning. SAISD and Shirt Civil Universal City. They begin on Tuesday. Floresville, Judson, and Randolph Field ISD beginning on Wednesday. So obviously a huge week for so many families. We have a full list of all the back-to-school dates that you need to know. Just head to KSAT.com. But speaking of Southside ISD, it is a district we have been talking about a lot recently. The district on the rise, not only a rise in buildings, businesses, and rise in population, but also a rise in academic accolades. So joining us in today's leading essay segment is Southside ISD Superintendent Rolando Ramirez. Good morning, sir. Thank you so much for joining us. 
Good morning. On behalf of Southside ISD, thank you for having me. So, Superintendent, we just talked about it, district on the rise. What does enrollment look like? And speaking of on the rise, does that pertain to the long-term future of Southside ISD? The enrollment looks fantastic. Last year, we had uh, more than 450 students than we had the previous year. This year already, before the start of the school year, we have 200 more students than what we ended this past year. Uh, the demographic study that, that was done this year shows potentially 17,000 uh, homes being built in our area. So this increase in enrollment uh, is, is embraced by our school district. It's welcome. We want you know, our students to know that Southside is the choice when it comes to deciding which school district to attend. So talking about the district growth, what has the recent academic performance been? So this past year, we had a, a district rating of an 88. Uh, for this year, the uh, accountability ratings won't be released by the state until September. But by doing the, uh, the comparison from this year's results to the previous year's results, and even though this year's test, there's been added rigor with the embedded writing and science, social studies and reading, the new item types uh, that have been part of the, this assessment, it's no longer just a multiple, multiple choice test. And we have improved in every subject, every uh, grade level in comparison to the previous year. So we've been talking about teacher recruitment. Obviously, it's been tough around the country. How are y'all able to maintain your recruitment and retain talent? We, we truly value uh, our employees, and we've always said that we should pay uh, our employees' weight in gold. Southside has the highest starting teacher pay than any uh, school district in San Antonio, and it ranks in the top three uh, highest paid positions from custodial uh, workers, bus drivers, paraprofessional, our technicians. So we, we feel that you know we have very high expectations and that you know, our staff uh, should be paid accordingly. And I think that helps with the recruiting efforts and the retention of our staff. Okay, so the first day of school is tomorrow. What are you most excited for and what should parents and students know? We are so excited to see our students back. It's already been a month and a half since we've seen the students who attended summer school. We have seen some of our, our students uh, that participate in the fine arts and, and the athletics already. But tomorrow we get to see all of our students and uh, the ones who are returning and the ones who are new to the district. Uh, so we're excited for that. And this year's theme is the A-Team. Together, everyone achieves more. And it's a collective effort from our students, staff, and community to reach that A and open up all the opportunities for, for our students. So working together as a team, we're going to try to reach that A this year. All right, so we, we have a little extra time, so I'm going to throw one more question at you. Yesterday, we had a photographer, Santiago, on the scene of the new nursing program on Southside ISD's campus. You know, what does that mean for the Southside ISD community, all the new families living there, and the students who get to see these brand new facilities right on their front door? Okay, it looks like we lost the superintendent. We lost signal. But if you are interested in learning more about that story or hearing more from the interview, you can check it out right now. Just head to ksat.com. Time is just about 840, 82 degrees. Okay, stick around. We're going to take a look at some trending topics on ksat.com, including a pop-up Alice in Wonderland bar. Oh, what do you think it? Cheshire. Did I just say that right? I don't know. Cheshire I was going to make a Mad Hatter joke. Cheshire? But Cheshire? What? Cheshire? Sure, we'll go with that. Sure, sure. You know, I don't know about that, but I do know about this. It is 82 <laughs> degrees already. It is humid out there. It is not going to get any cooler. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey for a full forecast in just a few moments. Good morning. Coming up on this week, we'll sort through the legal chaos overshadowing the 2024 presidential race with a new special counsel on the Hunter Biden investigation just announced and another indictment of Donald Trump expected in the coming days. We'll speak to Republican presidential candidate Chris Christie and Democratic Congressman Jamie Raskin this morning. All that plus the powerhouse roundtable coming up on this week. 
Okay, trending now on KSAT.com. Are you in the Hollywood, Hollywood, Hollow, well, Are you Halloween okay? <laughs> spirit? It's just so hot. It was hard to say Halloween. Uh, well, here's some good news. Spirit Halloween stores, of course, they're ready to pop up all over San Antonio. Head to KSAT.com to see if a location near you is already open. And don't forget to grab some Halloween party supplies while you're there. All right, speaking of Halloween plans, put on your calendar right now. Alice in Wonderland pop up bar happening October 19th. Yeah, put it in the calendar because odds are we're going to forget. It's going <laughs> October 19th through November 16th at Alma Plaza. A 90 minute topsy turvy immersive journey. Your ticket gets you three Wonderland themed drinks. Interesting. Three drinks. I know, right? The opportunity to make your own drink with the Mad Hatter. Okay. Okay, but if you aren't quite ready to say goodbye to summer, yet I'm ready. There's a long list of ideas for fun ways to spend time indoors, from the aquarium to adventure parks. There's some perfect ways to celebrate the last few days of summer break. Also things like the Duseum, Witty Museum, and we're not able to say goodbye to the summer heat anytime soon, Sarah. No, we are not. You know, technically last year in 2009 and 2011 have more 100 degree days than this summer, but we have had hotter heat. Mm. So take a look at San Antonio's record heat streak. So yesterday we got up to 105, which is the ninth day in a row that we have seen uh, records broken or tied at the San Antonio International Airport. Impressively hot since Oct August 4th. Rather, we have seen a record high or tied a record high in San Antonio. And today is going to be hard for us to get to the record. All right. Today we'll, we're forecasting 104, uh, but the record is 106 uh, set back in 1962. So it'll be difficult for us to get there, uh, but a few degrees shy. But in the coming days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, we're likely to see a record or beat a record. So we'll continue with the record challenging heat in the week ahead. It is going to be hot and a lot of people have been saying, well, Sarah, don't you have any good news for me? Can't you just say it's going to get cooler in the next seven to ten days? Well, honestly, it is hard for us to say with any confidence that even after the seven day period, we're going to see a cool down. Unfortunately, 82 degrees outside right now, some clouds out there that's going to shave off a couple of degrees from the high, but it's still going to be hot. Winds are from the south at 10 miles per hour outside right now. Some clouds early this morning, 75 in Rock Springs. Good morning in Kerrville. It's 79 degrees, 84 in Pleasanton. Let's take a closer look around San Antonio, 81 at Port SA, 81 JBSA Randolph, 83 in New Braunfels and 84 in Castroville. In your KSAT 12 hour forecast, quickly seeing skies clear around noon. It's going to be 94 degrees and mostly sunny. We'll already be at 100 by 2 p.m. And then in the afternoon, 104 for the high high fire danger, particularly in the afternoon when we have lower humidity, a hotter temperatures and winds are going to be from the south southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. So a little bit of a breeze too. please use caution today. Try not to create or spread grass fires. 106 in Del Rio, 108 in Catula, 103 in Canyon Lake, 102 in Kerrville, a little bit closer to the San Antonio metro area, 105 in Floresville, 105 in Seguin, 105 in Castroville, 101 in Bernie, 101 in Bulverde, 102 in Kerrville. And the weather setup, you can see that there's a good portion of the nation that's dealing with some showers and storms this morning across the central plains. If only we would be that lucky. We are staying under the influence of this heat high. You know, the heat high it settles over Texas every single summer. It's not unusual. What is unusual is that this one has been particularly strong and we have not seen any relief over the last several days. Now tomorrow we'll be at 105 in San Antonio. There is going to be a slight weather pattern shift for parts of Texas. North Texas will be cooler on Monday below 100 degrees all behind a very weak cool front. This cool front will bring some rain to areas in central Texas, but the catch is the front is going to fall apart as it moves through San Antonio, bringing only drier air in from the north. And so fire danger will be 
pretty high on Tuesday. It's still going to be hot near 104. There is a small 10% chance that you could see an isolated shower from that front, but generally it's going to continue to be hot as that heat high will redevelop and strengthen over Texas. We'll be at 106 on Thursday and again this week hard to find any relief in the forecast. Saturday will be our 54th 100 degree day. Again, I am hoping for a weather change next week, but that's all I can do right now is hope. That's all we can do. I can't give you any reassurances that next week is going to be any cooler than this week. Eventually it will cool down at one point. Eventually. I mean, we're already <laughs> talking about Halloween, the spirit yeah, store. Let's just stay so. in the spirit yeah, yeah. of the spirit Halloween. That sounds like there a good go. plan. And you can drink some spirits at the, uh, oh the pop-up shop. Three drinks? That's three drink, crazy. Yeah. Mm. I'm just saying. Things are getting. Get your ticket at KSAT.com. <laughs> All right, time now is 8.50, 82 degrees. Okay, you heard from Southside ISD superintendent today, but tomorrow in GMSA, it, it's a full Southside ISD takeover. That's right. I'm going to be out there joining all the kids and all the teachers from Southside High School, Menchaca Early Childhood Center. We're going to be talking about the district strategy to tackle the nationwide, seemingly nationwide teacher shortage. And we're going to be checking in, making sure schools are ready for the new school year. You're not going to miss it. While we just got the pollen count in, molds are low at 450. This is very, very uh, expected because it's been so dry that the only allergen out there is molds and even molds are low. 10 a.m. we're going to be at 86 and clearing out there. It's a little cloudy right now. 94 at noon and mostly sunny. 104 for the high. Breezy winds from the south southeast 10 to 15 contributing to high fire danger, especially in the afternoon. And then just adding up with the triple digits over the next several days. We're going to be at or near 105 each day with only the slimmest chances for an isolated shower on Tuesday. All right. I'm not going to lie to you, Sarah. This is what I've been waiting for. He's been talking about this all morning. This is one of my favorite things to do each and every year. These are the 10 finalists for the Te State Fair of Texas for the foods for the Big Tex Choice Awards. Came out this week. So the food items, are, I'm salivating even reading the list. <laughs> Food items, they're creative, they're unconventional, and they're almost all deep fried. Okay, let's talk about savory. First off is the deep fried cheesy crab tater bites. Eh, let's go. Might be a little too much. This deep fried pho, though, if y'all mm, can scroll pho, down. Pho, yeah. Pho, look, that looks amazing. That does look amazing. I'm not sold on this. So there's loaded fries pizza. So basically it's like cheese fries with bacon on mm. on top of pizza. It's I'm basic. Not, yeah, I'm not, I'm not about that one. This one is... It's oxalant. It's ox. Soul, soul roll. It's uh, beef oxtails. Savory. I mean, it's in the description. Delicious. And let's just skip to the desserts because we only have 45 seconds left in the show. This Look Biscoff Delight. Oh, yeah. Looks delightful. Yes. It, well done. Mm -hmm. I see what you did there. Uh, and then, come on, the bourbon, banana, caramel, can, sopa pias. I mean, it's wrong. picturesque. I like, put this on a wall somewhere. This is beautiful. <laughs> okay, but I am such a cherry pie girl. And you the, literally said, you're like, I love cherry I, pie. It's like my favorite dessert. So this Fernie's fried cherry pie in the sky. Ugh. I think we need to take a GMSA weekend trip to the state fair. Let's go. And do a taste test. I agree. Hey, have a great rest of your day. Y'all have a good Sunday.